Welcome back to another episode of Lulu's Perch. In this episode, I'm gonna go meet up with my mad professor scientist friend to cook up a batch of super soil, the concentrated dark matter of the gardening universe, biochar. Once again, class, that is how you make a regular old plumbus. And for homework, I want you to ask yourself, what doesn't it do? Dismissed. Uh, Ariane, how are you? You silly grumble, get over here. Ah, uh, you know that's not my name. Oh, we all know they call you Ariane out in space. What can I do for you? Well, we want to make biochar. Biochar? Alright, uh, you, you narrate, I'll do the drawing. Let's show you C-137 viewers how to do it. Let's do it. Well, the first thing we've, we've got to ask ourselves is, what the hell is biochar? If we split the word into two, we get bio, meaning living and life, and char being the shorthand for charcoal. Put these two together and we're achieving living charcoal. So adding life to pure carbon means we're essentially raising the dead. It's alive! If we look at our soil through a microscope, we'll see millions of tiny beneficial microbes and minerals all attached to our soil particles which help our garden grow. However, a single soil particle is limited to the amount of microbes and minerals which can attach to it. Biochar, on the other hand, has such an incredible amount of surface area that it can provide at least 10 times the amount of attachment points for minerals and tiny microbes to move into. They're all covered with filthy germs, aren't they, Smithies? Why, what do you mean, sir? Why the hell do we need it? So in our gardens, biochar can dramatically increase our soil fertility, our soil water retention, it can protect our plants against soil diseases, and on a global scale, it can mitigate climate change. Uh, that, that's all well and good, but uh, how do we make biochar? So we're gonna find as much wood as we can in the garden, and... And we're gonna set it on fire! Okay, it's nearly as simple as that, but we're gonna release our inner pyromaniac and burn wood in the absence of oxygen. This process is called pyrolysis. Pyro meaning heat, lysis meaning to break down. So we're breaking it down with heat. Uh, that sounds all well and good, Ariane, but how are we gonna burn wood without oxygen? Okay, so this is the fun part. First, we need a barrel. And not just any old barrel, but a 44 gallon drum. You can pick one up from the tip, but just make sure it's a food grade barrel. Otherwise, you could be burning some dangerous residual chemicals. Now, we need a smaller barrel. And this barrel is going to fit inside the big barrel. This is going to be our biochar container. If you're lucky enough to find these barrels with lids, then you're in business. If you're unlucky like me, I had to cut the tops off the barrels and then cut slits into the bottom section. I then banged the tabs into the center until the lid could fit on again. It wasn't airtight, but it did the job. While you've got the metal grinder out, cut some airflow holes at the top and the bottom of your fuel barrel. I'll explain why in a second. Then cut a hole in the center of the lid of the big barrel. This is to add a chimney. The chimney makes the burn more efficient, but adding it is optional. Now cut one small hole at the bottom of your biochar barrel. This will ensure that the gases from your wood don't explode in your face. And two screw turns! And... Now that we've cut our two barrels, place the smaller barrel inside the larger barrel and neatly arrange sticks and wood into it to maximize the amount of biochar you will receive. Resist the temptation to fill it with sawdust because this will often only insulate the wood against the heat that you want to expose it to. Now pop the lid on your biochar barrel and begin filling the space between the two barrels with sticks and logs. Keep stacking your wood all the way up to the top until it sits onto the lid of your small barrel. Now, let the burning begin. Clear a space outside of all debris. This isn't something you can do in your kitchen. Good lord, what is happening in there? Aurora Borealis. Ah, uh, but I want to know what's happening at a chemistry level. 
Show us the science, Aaron. Show us the science. Now light your firewood from the top of the barrel, and this is what will begin to happen. The fire is sucking oxygen from the bottom air vents, pulling the fire down. The internal barrel will begin heating up and forcing the sticks to release their natural gases, vapors, and oils, all of which are extremely flammable. The pressure of the natural gases build up inside the internal barrel until it's forced to escape out the bottom hole. It then mixes with the oxygen from the air vents to become a super fuel that gets sucked up into the fire, which in turn heats up the internal barrel even more. The steel barrels continue to hold the heat and the cycle continues until all the internal sticks have released all of their gases, until we're left with pure carbon. Once the biochar barrels have cooled down, you can unveil your scientific masterpiece. Now's the time to check on and test the quality of your biochar. If your biochar looks like a rich black with even a cobalt blue shimmer to the inside of it, sounds like seashells, feels so fragile that you could break it with your fingertips, and smells like a smoky barbecue sauce, then your biochar is perfect. Heck, some people even taste it. What do we do with it now? First of all, we're going to hose it down so it doesn't reignite because carbon is extremely flammable. And we're also going to wear a breather mask so we don't breathe in the carbon particles and get coal miners black lung. <coughs> I think I'm getting the black lung pop. Once we've covered those two precautions, we can now river dance on it until it becomes a beautiful black powder. As I mentioned before, carbon molecules have an incredible amount of attachment points. So if we apply our raw biochar directly onto the garden, it will actually steal nutrients from our soil until it is completely activated. But if we activate our biochar by spreading it throughout our compost and mixing it in with our compost tea, we can activate the biochar before we put it into the soil so it will begin leaching nutrients directly to its surrounding plants instantaneously. Now you know how to make biochar. You gotta go out and do it. You gotta save the world. You gotta like and subscribe to all of Ariane's videos and then make fake accounts and like them again for more adventures, more shot screeching PowerPoint presentations like this for infinity plus one more years. Lulu's perch, baby! Wabba-lubba-dub-dub!